Hey, you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forge Alliance Forever. Today I have a 4v4 ladder match here on the most amazing Naroxas map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with Team 1, also known as Blue Team, in the north. Ending with Team 2, also known as Red Team, in the south. Starting off with Team 1's rear guard air slot player of Hannah Below. Going first line as a UEF. He is in Tropical Ocean Blue and he's a 1337 rated also known as Leet Rated. To his southwest, we have in Amethyst Purple, Donnie going first line as a Cyber, and he is a 1903 Rated. To his west in Stitch Blue is the Seraphim play of Hybrid going first land. He is a Seraphim, and he is a 1650 Rated. And last but least on Team 1 in Royal Blue, we have Skillish Shunub going first land, second air. He is... A UEF. He is 1721 rated. So for Team One side of the map, they have two UEF in the back line with a Cyber to the east and a Seraphim to the west, which means they are lacking Aeon technology. Starting off with Team Two is Rear Guard side player of Schumer going first line. He is an UEF. He is a 1436 rated in Light O10. To his east in Chevy Crimson, we have the Cyber player of Gib80 going first land second there. He is in Chevy Crimson. He is 1607 rated. In Ruby Red to his northeast, we have System Failure going first land. He is a UEF and he is almost a 1500 at 1493 rated. And for Team 2, his last remaining player to introduce is Trath going first land second there. He is a 2008 rated player, high speed player on Team 2. And in the game overall, and he is an orange, the color orange. So for Team 2 side of the map, it's almost entirely UEF with one fraction of one sliver of Cybran in the back line, which means this game does not have UEF players. Apologies to those loyal to the princess. You are not represented, but hopefully you will enjoy this match nonetheless. And of course, Team 1 is lacking that Aeon tech alone. With Team 2 lacking Aeon and Seraphim Tech. Let's take a look at Reclaim before players scoop it all up. And for eight players, we have 13,000 Reclaim, which is a little bit over 1.5k mass per player. It's probably about 1.6, well, maybe even 1.7, considering it's uh, pretty close to 16,000, being able to easily divide into eight, but div easily divisible by eight. But, I mean, with only about... Um, 1,000.5 mass uh, available in Reclaim per player. There is, fortunately for them, a ton of mexes here on the map. And most of them not being in the middle. Most of them are actually residing on Team 1 and Team 2 side of the map, respectively. Let's take a look at red team side of the map. There is a quad mix position here. Another quad mix over here. And there's essentially that here for that western side in the middle. But in the southeast, we have a five-star mix position, another five-star mix position, Another five star max position here. So three five star maxes plus another five star max position here and a bunch of just one offs everywhere. I got a dual max here over east. So one, two, three, four, five five star maxes. That's 20 mass points just for those tightly grouped maxes. 28 maxes counting those uh, two four star maxes or quad maxes. And that's just a ton of. I mean, there's an actually. Uh, that's the main base. So that doesn't count. But besides that, I mean, there's a ton of mass points for our players to claim. Most of them will go to those Eastern and Western players on both those teams. But I wouldn't be surprised if some of them did get donated, most likely to the rear gutter slot, to start pumping out air. And that is it here for the game. As you can see here from Team 1's Donnie, a drop has occurred here, grabbing a nice little group of mexes soon once they build the team one land facilities pump out more engineers there's a little bit of raiding going on here from donnie as well on the ground going up to some early engineers against system failure to slow down his expansionary efforts but besides that team one's pretty quiet on that western front just wanting to eco up claim all those mixes and upgrade very 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 quickly everyone's eco is going to scale very quickly in this game just due to the absolute horde of mixes on this map and the facility here in the southeast has been spotted by Team 2. And I hold on. I don't think I... No, no. For some reason, it sounds like there isn't any sound, but uh, there is. It just doesn't really sound like there's any. We do have some strikers shooing, out, shooing away some of those hunters. They are being forced back here. And Team 1, I mean, besides that early drop, hasn't really done a whole lot. There's a nice little air scout over here, but again, it's kind of just sitting there hanging out. 
We do see the comms of both the rear guarders that play of Hannibal and frontline player of Donnie grouping here for the eastern front here. It does look like they're going to try to solidify things and just hang out for the time being. Western side, there is a movement here from Trith as well as from Schumer to push forward on this western side. Looks like he's going for this position that's already been grabbed by Trith. But again, they're trying to secure the western front as well for them. There is an avenue of attack through the middle. It's just very difficult to get through. You can see the path I drew in yellow there. This is essentially the middle lane that doesn't really exist. You can kind of... Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry about that. I mean, I, yeah, units can probably go up and down that, I think. But uh, besides that, there's really no benefit to going straight down the middle. And that does uh, line up with the fact that Donnie just decided to drop some position, some engineers down here. But this position will be taken care of pretty shortly, especially with Gib coming in to assist as well. As well as the comp of system failure, this does give a lot of time for Team Up to build up and defend this position in the east. They're sending a little bit of support down south. Not really a lot of effort is uh, focused on this. Engineers constantly being dropped going after T1 mech positions. Trying to claim as many of those positions as possible to get early, early income. Because those positions are going to get destroyed eventually. But, you know, after I think it's 30 something seconds or it's 20 something it's like a little bit around 30 seconds or so that mix pays for itself so after that it's just free mass or free real estate or free money or whatever you want to call it so it's a benefit for team one if they can get a little bit more mass out of team two's coffers and then uh upgrade their own we do see some pushback here from team two on this western side try trying to hold the fort down while his reinforcement of schumer comes in at least to secure his position there in the west He's trying to pressure Team 1 and force them to move westward, which they are currently doing, to be fair, to just expand and also defend this position. And Team 2, they already have their comms on the eastern side, so it looks like, I mentioned earlier, no one's realistically going to go down the middle here. And again, there are avenues to attack like this and like this, but realistically, it's not really worth it, in my opinion, to go down the middle. Essentially, the two theaters of war will be on the east and the west. It looks like that base here in the southeast has been dealt with here by Team 2's Gib and System Failure. They're kind of oh, annoyed that this position ex exists. I think the mass income and unit cost definitely is positive in the sense that Team 1 made more mass or made more, quote, money on the investment than they lost on it. So, you know, again, something's better than that. Even if it was, you know, a thousand mass more, at least that's a thousand mass they could put into an upgrade, that kind of thing. Annabella going for an upgrade here in the east, going for T2. Gun started here for Trith, and gun here for Team 1's hybrid, and also Team 2's Schumer going for T2. So two comms, on one on each team going for T2, and then one comm on each team going for gun damage and range slash speed and range because you have for the only one that get the damage upgrade. They don't get the speed upgrade of everyone else, but they get the nice little boost in damage. So one shot is more powerful, but they don't fire as quickly as everyone else does. So it's a, an advantage in some sorts and disadvantage for other sorts. It always just goes down to what you're fighting. Damage is better off for one, trying to one-shot units, and speed is just you want to shoot as many times as you can to deal with lower health units. Like a lot of T1 mech marines or Mantis in this case, whatever the case may be, there's a lot of strikers headed for Donnie's commander. And they're just going to keep pushing forward. They're not going to retreat. We also see some support intermixed here from Gib as well. So Team 1's Donnie is starting to be bombarded here. But a lot of those units are actually just going to force their way forward. And then decide, oh yeah, the comms right here. Let's just kind of run into him for a little bit. Donnie going to be slowed down by the constant booping that's going on here by those strikers. He is going to get some nice veteran scene, But I don't know if it'll be enough to get to one star here. We do see, of course, more matches coming into range here for Team 2's Gib as well. And focus does go down here from Team 2 saying, hey, you should probably attack this T1 PD being spammed up to defend Donnie's commander. And it will be enough to get Donnie into some safety for the time being, but the attack was mainly designed to push all the way through and go after more delicate uh, structures here, going after the mexes, going after the radars. Does look like they shift westward to avoid all the production facilities over here. They're going to kill off a decent amount of mexes, but I don't know if it's really worth it. There's a T1 mex here. There is a couple of Lobos in the mix. I definitely will help dealing with those T1PD protecting. And in the West, we see Trith and Hybrid getting very close to one another. There could be an engagement on the cards here. I am going to split it as well. 
We can see what's going on. Move this to the middle so I can actually see what's going on over here. Trite and Hybrid having at it over here. And in the east, the invasion actually splits. Most of the forces here for system failure go west, and most of the forces for Gib go east. Looks like Hannibal is going to move in the east to assist. And there's a lot of Mantis here. There's also a couple of Medusa as well. And Trite and Hybrid are having some words both to finish their gun upgrades. So they're able to attack a little bit further away. But Hybrid receiving a ton of damage. And Trite is as well, of course. And those units... Again, kind of jostling back and forth. We have some interceptors over the top to protect against some bombers. There are interceptors outbound from Team 1's Schumer as well to assist. And Shrith kind of just hanging out. Could reclaim some of his old units, but decides to uh, just kind of move back a little bit. Overcharge into hybrid. Takes out a couple of those hit points, and Shrith goes for the units. That way he gets some veterans. See, Shrith is always halfway over to one star. Hybrid is a little bit over to one star. Uh, those like Cannibalo and Team 1's Donnie have dealt with the majority of the attack. There's still a couple of units running around, but they don't pose a huge threat to either of those commanders, so I will move the little mini-map over. T2 is online here for Hybrid. Trite needs to take out that Ilshi. Almost shoots it in one go here with that overcharge. A little bit short of all of those hit points. We do see some nice Janus over the top here from Team 1. Skillish Noob just rains fire down from the heavens. And all those interceptors are protecting the calm of Team 1's hybrid from the incoming threat that is the UEF of Trite. We even see Skilly Shinoop on the front lines to witness the fire that will rain down on his uh, UEF cousin, traitor, whatever you want to call it. I'm thinking of uh, words from uh, Helldiver to use. It'd probably be traitor. But there are a lot of UEF on Team 2, so who's the real traitor probably? I, I don't know. You... Let me know down in the comments. I, I try to add a little bit of lore to it, but uh, this is just kind of a skirmish, as you would call it. Nice little simulation. The hybrid's still pushing forward. He does have a little bit of hit points that he can play with, but uh, is that one star veterancy now? We do have some interceptors trying to take out those Janus. Those Janus focused on the calm of Trite, forcing him back. And hybrid being focused on by those strikers, but he does have some Ilshi, actually a decent amount of them as well, that will not kill him off. We even see some reinforcements from the west as well to up that line of defense and honestly this attack almost killed off the calm of Trith and hybrid but uh, looks like it might just be Trith and uh, he needs some AA immediately trying to dodge those Janus shots but there's too many of them gets underneath some shield coverage and that little parashield gets annihilated here Trith below 1000 hit points one more bombing run and that will be it he's trying to dodge he's trying to get out of range he's just Baked in holy hellfire, and there he goes. The first com of the day killed off is the highest rated player on Team 2 and in the game overall of Trith. And now that will definitely blow a hole in Team 2's defenses. Janus are moving into the rear. Looks like they're going after the air slot players. T3 air facilities might be going after the T3 P gen. They are en route. But they do get picked up before they reach their targets. But their main goal of taking out the comm has been accomplished. I would not be surprised to see... It looks like Gip gets all of those units and structures. I wouldn't be surprised to see him gift that over to the air player. At least some of them at a minimum. Maybe just this over here since the comm is literally right there. <laughs> literally on top of that position. And Team 2 is going to have to recoil and retreat for the time being. But there's a ton of spam out to the east here from Team 2. And they are trying to attack those tickle cannons. Of course, are direct fire weapons like the Utashalas. They don't have any arc to them which means there has to be a direct line of sight, and, and they just don't work if they don't have that. And Hannibal can get some nice veterans. So at two-star, has the missile upgrade on board. He's not going to spam up some T1. He's having some reactions to, to some of the <laughs> alcohol he probably drank last night or something. He's all freaking out. And he's going to do a great job of holding off these units. That T1 PD is going to have a lot of firepower, be able to deal with those lower HP and tech off units. Overcharging unnecessary there. It looks like it might be on auto, so probably I'm going to take that off auto so we can micro it a little better. T1PD is focusing, being focused down here by system failure, but we are seeing some hop lights online. They don't have a lot of hit points, so they're not realistically good on the front lines. They're good, they're essentially the middle line. You have the main tanks on the front line with these behind them, and then the shields behind those to shield everything. And those units are trying to break through, but there are some gunships overhead, those stingers are online and Janus once again coming outbound here from Skillish Chinook raining down holy hellfire from the heavens and Team 2 will be forced to retreat this defensive measure 
is successful. They lost all the mixes, but they were T1. I feel like the mass that Team Two gain, sorry, Team One gained from Team Two is definitely worth it. Oh yeah, most definitely worth all the mass that they killed off. Ilshi's pushing forward here in the west, get annihilated by some T3 Titans. Titans can be overwhelmed here by T2 Ilshi's, but uh, they have to be enough of them, which the numbers are currently not. They're not enough. There's some scorches over top. The little brothers to the uh, Napalm capable as well, Janus. Do you see Nano Repair coming on the way here for Hybrid? He's already back up in the green, but, you know, more hit points is never a bad thing. More, more, more hit point region is never a bad thing. But we have some T2 Rhino that walked up and said, Hey, I want to die today. <laughs> Just, again, a thousand you know, or a lot of one thing can kill another thing. And T1 uh, units definitely kill off that little tank from T Team 1. We do see Ilshi's rotated northeastward to take out a couple of mixes over here. But there's no escape. They can't Skyrim off the edge of this cliffside like a horse can. So they're just going to receive fire until they die. Hopefully some ASF or interceptors come and assist. That is a decent amount of Janus. That could be a snipe opportunity. I mean, they already got one kill. Might as well go for a second one. Titans moving up. I don't know if they noticed that uh, Team 1's comm of hybrid is just sitting there. But once they move in, I do love the ping saying they need radar. All of the Ilshis from the western side and other units now rotate eastward to try to you know, assist defensive measures of the comm. But Titans go, we'll just avoid all that nonsense and go west. And the Titans, again, now this is the situation where they get overwhelmed significantly by those Ilshis. The Ilshis just rip apart those Titans really, really, really quickly. And they probably wish they were home, sipping up some uh, nice cold cider and hanging out with a good book. We do see those uh, Ilshis still being attacked by those Scorchers. Aren't getting any relief anytime soon, unfortunately. And uh, just... I guess Team 1 can't be bothered to save them. We do see some Percy's opening up, and those will deal with those issues really quickly. Nice that the shot then overkill the wreck of the other one. So good to see that splitting up duties there. Another attack is happening to the west this time. Team 1 kind of jostling back and forth here between the easternmost side of the map and then the west east, or the middle east, or whatever you want to call that lane. We do see a drop outbound here from Team 2's Gib. Do you have, nope, you don't have any of those, uh, what are the bugs called? Not the bugs, the, uh, the, the beetles, the beetles. And those units get uh, annihilated out of the sky, unfortunately. And there they go. And I don't see, uh, there is another attack app on here from Team 1's hybrid. And he's using those forces just to give him a little bit of time so he can build the advanced nano repair upgrade on board his commander. And I feel like these units could just retreat. There are some Percy's in the mix now, so they're constantly doing a ton of damage here to Team 1's forces. Where they're just sniping all of those uh, T2 Ilshis. And the spam that was rotating westward stops, falls back a little bit, and the other group splits off and goes eastward. T1 PD being spammed up to try to shore up those defenses. This T1 facility annihilated by those Lobos below the cliffside here. T1 Mex is actually upgrading the T2 as we speak. Unfortunately here for them, all of those Lobos are coming into range and all of those Mexes are dead and you're not getting back those mass and energy there, Donnie, unfortunately for you. And now the comms are rotating eastward to defend. And in the west, we do see some bricks online here for Donnie as well. And there are some Percy's. Definitely what you want to use to take out all of those Rhinos that are now online. And the shots going after the bricks, trying to make contact. Only one hits, but does drive them back. And Team 2 has now claimed the eastern side once again. A couple of Mantis veer off to go after T2 Max here against Hannah Below. Those forces have now pushed forward slightly more northward here for Team 2's Gib, trying to force back Hybrid. Hybrid is at 69. Nice. Percent on that upgrade has gone up to 72 now. There are some Authams now online here as well with some Lightning Tanks. So AA, so not AA, but air is not going to be as effective, at least for the time being. ASF over the top, trying to snipe all of those Janus. But those Janus are in high in number, and those ASF are not enough. They'll deal with a decent amount of casualties here to Team 1. But there are some ASFs also in the mixer for skill issue, and it doesn't really go at Team 2's way. We do see those Othams just doing tons and tons of damage to those Otham siege tanks. 
Janus over top firebombs his own units. That's uh, well not only his friendly units. That's uh, never a good thing. We do have some Cougars in the mix trying to counter those uh, T2 fighter bombers. And now those OCs are being forced back by those Percy's. Percy's targeting the comm of hybrid. And they are receiving some fire from those Ilshis. Now Janus over the top getting a nice grouping here on those Percy's. And an overcharge kills off some of them as well. Ah, that's got to hurt. That has got to hurt. Actually, Percy at uh, two-star vengeance now. Getting 12 hit point regen a second. Again, that's better than nothing. Kills off another Ilshi there. And ASF will kill off the rest of those Janus. So Team 1 trying to make use of those T2 fighter bombers. When you see a lot of those these days, you usually just see straight to T3 or something else. Maybe some T2 gunships and T3 gunships. Never really the bombers. Maybe Nathas once in a while. And Corsair is that video a couple days ago. Maybe it was a week ago, a couple days ago at least. But besides those games, I really don't see a whole lot of uh, those T2 units used in the air besides the gunships. Lucky Lloyd is online here for Gib in the middle of the map and almost at 20 minutes on the clock. Let's take a look at the income and game overall. Team 1 at 900 mass income. Team 2 at almost 900 at 880. So they're trailing Team 1 by about 20 mass per second. And honestly, between four players, that's five mass per player more for Team 1 versus Team 2 if everything was distributed evenly. So realistically, that's not that much of a threat. Team 1 has four players left. Team 2 has two players left. The map control, eh, it's not really 50-50. I say it's 45-55, so Team 1 at 45. But again, even if Team 1 crosses the no man's land, there's really not a lot of mexes to go after, so it's not really net positive for Team 2. It's just taking territory away. That's That doesn't really do a whole lot if there's nothing to take away besides the territory. And let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win the game. Of course, if you haven't done so already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, share this video with anyone, everyone, and especially your pets. And of course, as always, thank you so very much to watching to this point in the video. We do see a brick wall forming here in the northeast here for Team 1 forcing back. Oh, that was a really dumb cut that didn't mean to let go of the uh, space bar there. The Percy's are retreating. There's more bricks than Percy's, but there are more coming to reinforce that line. We do even see the comm of Team 2. So I think that's Gib? No, Gib is Cyber. That would be system failure in the distance. He has no upgrades on board that commander, very surprisingly. No T2, no missile, no gun, no nothing. Gib also has nothing, so just bare stock commanders here in the east. A couple of bricks get landed, and missile outbound will kill off the mass here for that T2 mech. So that's going to hurt Team 2's eco just a little bit. And all those units are moving northward, and I don't think those bricks have been spotted here by Team one, by Team 2, so that's uh, going to be annoying. So we have some gunships outbound here from Schumer moving eastward. Where they're going, looks like they're coming in to join the attack in the east. A ton of ASFs over top here for Team 1's Gib. He's also in the air game, so we have two players on Team 2 in the air game. Team 1 only has only have two as well. So two air players and two ground players, or two land players, excuse me. Ground, land, same thing. But the monkey being online here for Team 2's Gib being severely supported by UEF forces. So it's the cheapest experimental in the game with all of the UEF ground support. And you have Cougars, you have AA, you, I mean Flak, you have Percy's, you have Shields. Would love to see maybe... Hmm, some Titans, maybe for some rapid fire nature nonsense. But besides that, love the mix of units here for Team Choose Gib. And he's going straight after Hybrid's commander. That Hybrid commander is in range off them, focusing down the, the Monkey Lord. The Monkey Lord now going to turn and face the Calm. The Calm didn't receive a lot of firepower to begin with, and now we'll get to five star veterans, 10,000 mass killed. And Donnie is killed off by Schumer in the east by gunships. That's definitely disappointing here for Team One. And Hybrid in the west. Does have a lot of PD to fall back to. Those Percy's are starting to be low in number. Flak over the top trying to prevent the incoming nature of those gunships, those broadswords. They're best well equipped to deal with ground units. And we don't have any AA in the mix left, which means Team 1 will be fine to just deploy all the gunships. They have ASF over the top. Going to try to target all of the gunships before the Percy's are eliminated. Hybrid at 50,000 hit points with that nano calm Ton tons of hit points on board cyber seraphim commanders so so tanky asf fly over the top protecting those gunships 
course, he's getting into the back line, going after all of those mechs. T1 engineers doing nothing. Those shields need to fall back and support those Percy's. The Percy's, of course, the front one being targeted. You don't want any of them coming into range because they do all of their damage on the outset. An ASF fight over the top here between both teams. Team 1 will win that flight most handedly just due to the fact that Team 1 has the numbers. But Team 2 has some nice engagements, nice turns in the mix as well. Oh, I think Team 2 might just have it here. Pa game gets positive for a brief second. Percy's are now in range of T2 mixes. They're targeting the engineers, it looks like. There's not that many Percy's left, but they can still do a lot of damage. Another set of T2 mixes here in the northwest are being taken out. ASFs clear all of the gunships, and now those Percy's have free range to do whatever they want on that western side of the map. Team 1's eco is going to go down really, really, really quickly. Of course, the monkey will add a lot of reclaim for Team 1's hybrid, but he's going to funnel that into a chicken and shore up that western front. Looks like there's another attempt gearing up to move forward here for Gib. And in the east, with the fall of Donnie, it falls to hy not hybrid, skill issue noob to manage that eastern side. Definitely a better player to use that instead of uh, hybrid because he's focused on the western side. And there's one T2 mechs down here. Uh, these engineers are now rotating eastward. They're gonna kill off a ton of his eco and uh, skill issue noob's eco as well. His air grid's being nice and plump. Nice little J or L or kind of backward C action going on over there. Egret not as big here for Hannibal though, but I guess he's focused more on, I don't know what he's focused on. But Skillishinium now has 700 at mass income here for himself. More gunships are online and more mixes are offline here for Team 1. Team 2 now in the lead for mass income for the time being. T3 mechs very valuable here. Percy's need to target this thing. Taking out the mass storage is probably should focus fire on the mechs itself. One more shot would do it. There it goes. It's down. We have some more T2 mechs here. The northeast nice little tri mech. Oh, sorry, five star mech position. T2 mechs just got upgraded. Those engineers are gonna get out of there before they get targeted. T2 Max gets targeted. They just finished upgrading that. There it goes. One more shot. There it goes. Another Max is killed off. These Percy's getting tons of value. Five star of efficiency, three star, four star, four star, five star, five star. Man, this squad of Percy's is definitely worth their weight in mass and then some. I'd say gold, but gold doesn't really play a factor in this game. But still, those ASFs just constantly being turned up in the northwest corner of the map. And Team 1 is now plugging the hole that was caused here by those Percy's and that Monkey Lord a long time ago. Still, just, just running ravages. R running, not ravages, running wild. There we go. Running wild here with Team 2's. This, this play by Team 2's Gib is just suffocating Team 1's eco. Specifically, of course, hybrid. But also Skill Issue Noob is receiving some you know, slaps to the face with that. Team 2 at 1.4 income here. We just see some PD lining up here. Of course, there's a little bit of AoE spread on board those Percy, so they're going to get some nice little bit of AoE. Not a whole lot, but it, it'll do it a little bit. T3 shield going to pave the way here for that Otham. Six Percy's remain. And now we see Otham's rotating. Gun ASF over the top going after the gunships once more. More Otham's being taken out. They notice the PD. Doesn't look like there's any AOE, excuse me. It looks like there was, but uh, it is not. They're just one-shotting all of the PD. Some of the PD are able to target one of those uh, Percy's. Percy will not die. And they're going to get some T3 mixes now. It looks like one of them did die, so five Percy's remain. Man, this squad of Percy's is devastating. Look at this, just a little group of Percy's here in this base. Ravagers being built as well as triads for their longer range. Ravagers opening up, but of course the Percy's are in range. One Percy remain sorry, one Percy killed off. Four Percy's remain. Percy's need to target the T3 mexes. They're gonna die in this position. I know they're targeting all the engineers. They do get commands to go after those mexes. Another one is killed off there. Target the Ravager. That's gonna do a lot of the damage here. Man, Gib, yeah, you just annihilating all this eco. <laughs> Another Percy falls, three remain. Otham's coming in from the rear from hybrid to assist. I'm going to target that per that uh, T3 mechs in the distance. Now those last three Percy's, a third of mechs is killed off. 
tons and tons of eco just wiped out by these Percy's. One more shot. Oh, I think it was close. I think that mechs was close. Uh, two more shots would have killed off that uh, that mechs there. But look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 plus mixes were killed off in that one engagement by Gibb. That was huge. Uh, he lost, of course, all the mass that went into the monkey, but the Percy's that remained were devastating for Team 1. Team 1 at 1.1k. They've stayed at that the entire time. Team 2 has now jumped up to 1.6 in, in the interim, and now we see an attack outbound in the east once again. And I will split it once again so we get a nice little view on both sides of the map. Team 1 doesn't really have a lot of AA to deal with these gunships. I do love the mix of Whalers and Broadswords. Whalers a little bit more adept at taking out AASFs and other air units. While the gunships from the UEF, the Broadswords, are designed for taking out the ground units. You do see these Percy's being the main battle line unit here for Team 2. And it just goes to show that Percy's are the way to go. Bricks are good. Othams are good. Harbingers are good. But I just the, the firepower that comes off these Percy's is devastating mainly about getting all the damage out first so even if the unit dies all of its damage gets fired out while the brick relies on its high hp pool and rapid rate of fire to be able to pump out as much damage as it can the downside with that is if the brick dies within a couple of seconds of it firing all the damage it could have done is wasted while the percy if all, you know one shot gets released that's all of its damage until it reloads and uh all that brick just gets focused down by those uh those percy's get focused down by those bricks and we do see a crab online here for Team 1. That's going to stop any sort of engagements and forward momentum for Team 2. And I think that's about it of the split. But still, it's nice to get that nice little view of what's going on on both sides of the map, though. Whalers forcing back the Othams. Team 1 needs those lightning and flak cannons online sooner rather than later. Looks like he might be building some back here pretty shortly. There's some T3 right there. And with the huge massive lead in Eco, I wonder what Team 2 is doing. Well, they're going for a nuke. Okay, that's a good use of your mass. Going for another nuke. Okay, that's another good use of your mass. Oh, please tell me there's another nuke somewhere. That'd be very funny. And everyone's going for nukes. That's SMD. Okay, anti-nuke. That's always a good idea. And it looks like that's about it. Team 1, what are you focused on? I know you were dealing with the, the attack from those versus SMD online all halfway loaded. Still dealing with the wreck of those Percy's. Still so... Look at all the mechs. They're still down. And the the thing about them is being so far away and there's no infrastructure up here. Is you have to fly or walk all your engineers over there, build the mechs again, and then upgrade them once again unless you start with T3 mechs. Or T2 mechs, depending on how far you want to go with them. T3, T3 is always the uh, main goal. But Missile Barrage outbound going for the... Megalith misses the Megalith. Would have done tons of damage to it had the Megalith not moved. Looks like that was outbound from this line. <laughs> Aloha is, is uh, might be the title of this video. Just just Aloha. Just hello and goodbye. <laughs> you see the uh, crab in the background there. Missiles raining in. Looks like the crab does move. Takes the shield out. Nuke will launch. This It is from Team 2's Cyber Nuke Launcher, the Liberator. And it is outbound here for Team 1. Oh, there is no SMD there. Is the SMD loaded in the east? It, it would have been close, but I think the SMD would have loaded there for Hannah Below. There is an SMD. It was just built. Unfortunately, it was just built. It doesn't have anything loaded. This SMD built a little bit earlier, but still wasn't loaded. And that is going to hurt ASS Flyer over top. Hopefully they don't get caught in the blast. They might get out of... Oh, they're going to get out of means They'll be fine. And, of course, as we say on the channel, Kaboom! Takes out the entire, except for one, air grid there for Team 1. Skill issue noob. And that is huge for Team 2 in the air game. Missiles outbound once again, just raining down on top of that megalith. Oh, tons of hit points. Takes out more than half of those hit points on board the crab. Ouch. Again, aloha and goodbye. Those uh, TMLs just getting tons of value out of them by taking out thousands upon thousands of hit points. Look at all those aloha missile launchers. They're just nuts. They're nuts. 
in the west we see a bunch of t1 spam going after a megalith of course there are some t2 and t3 units in the mix as well and whaler's doing a very good job of holding them up, them off t1 doesn't have the air it doesn't want to engage the air that they have left we do see some asfs although uh, oh, 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 just from skill issue now in the northwest we don't see any asfs here from team one's hannah below maybe he's just gifting all of them over here to team one a skill issue noob skill issue at 188 asfs and team two's let's see that's interceptors we see 62 plus 32 gunships plus an additional 98. Team 1 has air dominance by a large margin, margin. They just don't want to engage because they don't have the air facilities to replace the ASFs. They have some, but not as many as they had. So he's very cautious with what he has, and I don't blame him because that's definitely a lot of ASFs to have and then lose due to AA and whatnot. But one crab is forcing its way forward here for Team 2. There's a large group of Othams with supporting units here for Team 1 for defensive measures. The crab does have a long range on it, so it might start to you know, snipe at those units, but Team 1 can counter with missile launchers, with artillery, with a whole bunch of other stuff. Team 2 has your other nuke launcher going halfway to an, its first one. This one's almost halfway to its second one. Killed off 76,000 mass in that one nuke. That's a lot of mass. Spearheads are online, pummeling the front lines here for Team 1. Lots of zappers are coming online to defend. Access denied. Wait, I don't know what that was about, but apparently something about dropping, possibly. Uh, yeah, possibly access denied. Noob. And something smiling about Trith. Don't know what he's talking about, but it had to have been some transport or something. Oh, there's one over here. So engineers, but that's not. Been sitting there for a while, says Trith. I don't know. There had to have been another missile launches outbound going after the crab. The crab is not moving again. Oh, that crab might die from this. Zero hit points a second regen. It gets it technically gets one, but it's less than one, so it doesn't count. Some zappers are online, but uh, it takes some damage. But because they hit the ground, the AoE spread isn't a lot. And so you really have to hit the actual chassis of the crab if you don't the aoe is not enough that is one benefit of the crab if people just strike at the blue circle it essentially hits the bottom of it it seems like right about there and you can see the uh the height on the crab is definitely worth it you if you want to target anything on the ground you probably want to target the little its butt it's a giant uh, hexagonal thing that it drops the spawn units in missiles are outbound for that weakened crab it's gonna all miss but most of the missiles were killed off anyways team one has a ton of mass going into zappers I feel like team two might scrap their efforts here pretty shortly once they notice all these zappers that are being built team one the error now being microed by Hannibal o himself looks like skill issue noob gonna be focusing more on the ground efforts on the eastern side tons of team one spam in the easter a ton of lobos outbound and there is no avenue to get to Hannibalo's position here. So it's just going to go after a T3 mechs, which, I mean, I guess for all this spam and distraction, it's probably worth the T3 mechs. It forces all of these bricks to move eastward, full out of position. Does allow for Team 2 to push slightly more forward. Spearhead spamming up all those missiles to keep those zappers at, bi at bay, or busy, I should say, while the main line of missiles do get launched pretty shortly. Team 2, while they're playing an aggressive game, are playing very, its I would say it's defensively aggressive. And I would say that in the sense that they're, they're very aggressive for keeping Team 2 on the defensive, meaning constantly building zappers, constantly moving units over here, constantly moving units over there, constantly forcing themselves to move around, use their APM to move their you know experimentals around, all that sort of thing. They're constantly forcing them to be on the defensive, which... Sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, but with 2.2k mass income for three players, one of which is at 1.1k himself, that being Gib, and all of the mass that he has access to, he hasn't even upgraded all of his T2 to T3, T2 maxes to T3, just spamming up a bunch of hives. I don't even see a quantum gateway online here yet. Looks like he's working on getting all those mechs. Another nuke is outbound here from Team 2. This time it's from Schumer. Schumer's going after. Looks like it's going after T. It's going after this position here, building some Novaxes. All those ASF are going to move. SMD is online and loaded, so that nuke will be denied. 
Is the other nuke loaded? Yes, it is. So they could easily go after that position. So Team 1 has decided to go for the strat of, well, if I have to be defensive, I'm just going to sit in my base with some lasers and hang out, have a nice time. And there goes that nuke. It is denied. Huge, huge amount of Zooey spam. Nope, that's the wrong button. 200 Zooey. Not 100, not 50. 200 Zooey is so many Zooey's. Tons of spy planes not going to be eradicated by those ASF. Going to get no input on what's going on over there in the middle of the map. Team 1 definitely has the air advantage with a whopping 300 plus ASFs and he's going to try to singe the ASF of Gib but again there's just a couple of air facilities uh, anti-air facilities 170 plus uh, is the wrong player so I can't actually select these units 140 so about 300 so team one barely in the lead with the ASF counts but still when they're under the control of one player it's a lot easier to micro than when they're under the control of two different players Getting the turns right, whatnot, kind of difficult when you have two people trying to do it at the same time. Now we have some def uh, offensive creep here from Team 2's Gib going for some, not PD creep, but T2 artillery creep. Forcing Team 1 to engage here shortly. Chicken is online and artillery raining down on some Othams. Team 1 needs to counteract this lineup. There's two crabs with a bunch of shields and other T3 support. We do see some shields going to be established as well. Percy's going to move just slightly forward to pave the way for that artillery barrage to engage. And Team 2, again, they're being defensively aggressive. And you could be aggressively defensive. I feel like that might be a better way to categorize. Maybe that's a better way to categorize it. This is uh, aggressively defensive, and this is defensively aggressive. In the West, it's aggressively defensive because you're building a bunch of essentially defensive units forward. Like PD creep, and on the east, you're building a bunch of units for defensive purposes. So, aggressively defensive and defensively aggressive. And it looks like Gib being handed everything over from system failure. System failure might have to go to the bathroom or control K or maybe his dog is doing something or whatever, so he has to. Uh, I have to go, says system failure. Okay, so I guess he just has to go in general. Maybe he has to go to sleep or something, but. Team 2 will lose another player, but Team 2's Gib will inherit everything that he has. So 1.8k uh, income, 1,800 mass income for Team 2's uh, Gib is a lot. It's a lot of mass. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go game ender. One satellite is online, and that thing's goal should just be taking out all the T3 mexes, which it's currently doing. Trying to sniper that though. There goes the system failure control K. Oh, no! The engineering stations. He's right next to them. Ooh. All those drones. Oh, no. There they go. There go all the drones. <laughs> they all died. They'll get rebuilt, but uh, Schumer goes, what the heck? It's, uh, looks like the nuke is online once again. Duke at half percent complete or half percent. Fifty percent completed. Looks like the shielding is breaking a little bit here for Gibbs air grid. Look, that might indicate that Team 1 has an artillery piece online. One of the crabs falls on that front line due to the horde of missile fire raining down on it. That is a lot of spearheads. And those uh, megaliths are just receiving shot after shot. We do have a lot of Alohas built up with a bunch of missiles. And those nukes are outbound. It's going for this in the east. And we do see a drop from some... I think those are... Bricks on board that Continental outbound here from Skilda Shinu going in the back line, going for those mexes. And those uh, crabs will be forced to essentially sit there. Nuke is outbound. I don't think it was really worth it to go after this. Team 2 kind of had it handled on that eastern side. There it goes. It's outbound anyway. That crab will get EMP'd. Going to be forced to stay still for a second. Missiles will have a chance to kill that off. But bricks do land, taking out a couple of the mexes here for Gib. Give Sumer some mass as Trith. It's probably a good idea. He's trying to build an artillery piece is what he's trying to point out. Team 2 is also pushing in the west. Again, that aggressively defensive artillery play, forcing back the land army once again here for Hybrid. Hybrid's on the defensive, but he's being slowly pushed out. On that western side. Missile Barrage is outbound. Tried to go for that uh, Megalith napping. Does not kill it off. 
And that Megalith is going to be, again, just retreating all day. Gunship's over here to the east. Going to go after those bricks that landed. Those bricks still going to get some value out of it. Going to be able to kill off, I think, one or two more T3 mechs before... The, oh, well, okay, maybe not. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not with all those whalers. We'll probably get that mechs, and that might be it. Team 2 on this eastern side. Again, just Strategic launch detected. forcing their way forward. Team 2 launches another nuke. This one's at 91,000 mass killed. This one's at zero mass killed because the first one it fired was knocked out. Satellite over top notices the... Oh, it's targeting the P-Gen. T2, T3 shielding needs to be a priority here for Team 2. Are they going to lose that Duke that they've been building this entire time? Reclaim the... No, reclaim the fusion reactor. you got to reclaim it. No, it's going to blow up. You're going to lose all your buildings. Build support. The uh, shield's going to be close. It's going to barely cover it, but if they attack from the right side, they're still going to get it. There they go. They take out the artillery piece. That's got to hurt. Needed a T3 shield there, uh, Schumer. But nuke lands in the northwest, killing off a ton of those units. It looks like the SMD is now the target here for Team 2. Sorry, Team 1. Only killed off 15,000 mass, though, so not really a huge, huge nuke. But again, something. Three satellites are online with their own nuclear launcher here. Three is going for the nuke game as well. And we have another satellite here in the northeast for Hannibal. It's going to be satellites all day here pretty soon here for Team 1. And that's a lot of ASF and SMB is being prioritized severely. Actually, no, it's being focused on the chicken. But, you know, nearby there just to not make the builds, not, not the build pattern move a whole lot. Artillery just constantly just moving forward here. It's Kind of oppressive here on that western side. Now we have mobile T4 artillery here. Fatboy is online. And that's going to force Team 1 back again now on this eastern side. It's going to open the door for those missiles to be used to great, uh, great effect here. Tons of missiles. Just ton and ton and ton of missiles online here for Team 2. 42 minutes on the clock here. And not really a whole lot has happened besides the artillery being denied and the nukes firing. I think I'm going to speed it up to 1. I feel like that's kind of worth it at this point. 42 minutes on the clock here. Gunships moving in on the eastern side. I wonder where they're going. Lots of gunships in the back line. Just hanging out, not doing a whole lot. But, you know, they're in reserve, so they're, they're going to be useful. Three crabs now pushing forward with the artillery. And this is the range of the T2 artillery. It can hit some of those defenses. It'll open the door, at least for the crabs and Percy's to push on through. And some of those Percy's are now in range, actually, of the T2 artillery. Sorry, T2 PD. Most of them are now gone. And the crabs are going to just start bombarding everything once they get into range. How is the air grid down south here for Team 1? Oh sorry, for Team 2. But Team 1 has three satellites over top. I'm kind of surprised that the other satellite isn't over here. I saw it moving. I only see three. I do not see the fourth one. does look like there were some spy planes over there. It's online. I just don't know where it is. Uh, well, okay, let me grab let me grab Team One. See if I can find the air unit. Uh, it's over here, going after the satellites online for Team Two. Team Two has satellites as well. Satellite wars all day. It looks like another Duke has been started here. This time from Gib. Need to assist shields with NG says. Uh, Try to his teammate of Schumer, but. Team 2, again, being defensively aggressive, not pushing in with everything they have. The chicken's staying barely out of range. The crab does outrange the chicken, so the chicken probably should back up just a tiny bit more. We have T2 artillery now raining over the top here for Team 1, trying to force those chickens, no chickens, crabs back. But the crabs are not going to fall back. You have three of them and shields and more T2 artillery being spammed up. They're not going to stop anytime soon. Gunship's not going to come into range here pretty shortly. Move in and assist. Not a lot of AA in the mix, at least that I can see. It does look like the chickens will engage the crabs. Unfortunately, the crabs will hyper-focus on those chickens. One chicken to the west, two chickens to the east. Gunships moving in, targeting the SMD. ASS will go over top. Nuke is outbound. They want to take out that SMD before it can take out the nuke. All those gunships going for it. Oh, a lot of them being killed up before they even reach the target. Shields starting to collapse. The SMD is going to stay online. Ah, oh, that's got to hurt. They only needed probably about four or five more uh, gunships and would have called it a day. 
Now the just spam that is the Zooey's are outbound. Those crabs are being annihilated as we speak. One crab falls. And this is at zero speed. Team one still has one chicken online. The second chicken, the third chicken. All the chickens are down, but the crabs are down here for team two as well. I don't count this one being online because it's essentially dead. The fourth chicken is online. The nuke does not land, unfortunately, here for team two due to the SMB not being taken out. Had those whalers over here to the wherever they went. No, over there. Had they been called in, they probably would have been enough to uh, prevent the nuke from being denied. But another nuke is outbound. This time it's from Team 1. And where is it going? It's going in the back line. The SMD is offline. Team 2, Schumer. This, oh, that's not going to be good. The SMD is offline. And this uh, SMD will not cover that base. This is huge here for Team 1. They needed a break, and they got it. And that nuke is going to land. And now one, two, three, four, six satellites are online for Team 1. And like I said, it is Satellite Wars now. SMD was built, but got denied. They're not doing it. Oh, that's disappointing. The artillery just got built, too. It was p getting into position. Team 2 Schumer will be killed off by nuclear hellfire. Kaboom! Dual explosion. The artillery is annihilated, and Team 2 loses another player. It's Gibb versus the world at 46 minutes on the clock. And is that a Scathus fire? Yes, it is. Team 2 has a Game Ender Scathus online. They need to shield that up immediately. Shield. Yeah, okay. Again, thank you, Tricing. Shield Scathus and make another. He has 2.9 thousand mass income, and those satellites are coming into range. They are moving for that... Um, that Scathus immediately, multiple lines of shields are going to be built. You need to build those shields. The Scathus is still exposed. Upgrade them as well. Distribute orders. Do something. Scathus is actually going to reposition. It was targeting the air grid in the northeast, and half of it is gone. Hannah below, probably not going to be happy about that. Has a ton of ASFs to his name, though. And speaking of which, how many do you have? Five, 600 ASFs. He has 600 ASFs online. Team choose Gib, only remaining player. Has only 308. Well, no, sorry. No, he has 600. You have to count the ASF from the UEF and the uh, ones from the Siren faction. Scathus. Uh, do not tell me. Okay, I thought he was raining down on the actual air grid. That, or not the air grid, the ASFs. That would be hilarious. But the satellites are breaking through the shielding here for that Scathus. Build more shielding. You got to assist, 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 assist that shielding here, Gib. You got to build more, sh you know, shields, and they got to be, well, at least T3, I think, at this point. Assist the hives, or hives assist because they're doing, because they're doing it, because it will work. And if the Scathus breaks the shielding for Team One, that's five satellites that Team One will lose, and that's why they're building more satellites as we speak. Oh, there goes the artillery landing next to some P gens. Takes out a lot of the engineering support. How's the Scathus doing here? Okay, let's actually split it. I'm going to have one just focused on the Scathus so we can see how the shielding's going. The ASF positioning in the east. I don't know where they're going. Looks like they're going to actually draw some of the ASF to the east as well. The attack in the west looks like it's going on slowly, but it looks like Team 2 is holding the line for the time being. The artillery is landing on top of those couple shielding. Skill issue noob going to build more of them, and defense going to build another satellite. Shielding is starting to hold here for Team 2, and it looks like the Novaxes are actually rotating back to that positioning. Don't know, maybe he misclicked or something. But there they go, back to that position. Team 1 still has a satellite in the form of Team 1's... Yeah, there's, don't, don't know where it is. Oh, it's down here. Okay, I just didn't see it. Just zoomed in a little too much, I guess. This position, uh, it's still holding. Lots of drones on that one shielding. Team 2 needs... Something to punch on through, either some the bombers or a nuke or something. SMD still online in the west, and of course SMD about to die, actually. There it goes. It's killed off, so one SMD is down. If Team 2 can sneak a nuke in, which... Let's see, let's grab hybrid. You would have to approach it from the east, which that nuke over here might not... Actually, the nuke is actually gone, excuse me, so they have no nuke. Looks like the Novax just took out the nuke. That's definitely annoying for Gib because that's what he was probably going to use to try to win. Shield says try it. Yep, build more shields, but the nuke is gone, so there went that. Those satellites trying to focus down Gib's commander, trying to assassinate the commander of Team 2 and end the game and win it for Team 1. 
And right now, the satellite's doing a pretty good job of forcing Com of Gib to just keep moving. SMD over here as well to protect the uh, Scathus. I do hear strap bombers somewhere, I thought. That's what it sounded like. Don't know where that's going on. Strategic launch but detected. it does look like I can not worry about that. But SMD is down. Gib's going to be forced to move. He's actually below 3,000 hit points. And Nuke is launching here from Team 1's position of Skillish and Noob. This might be it. This might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Actually, probably, I don't know if it broke or not. But Team 2 has an SM has no SMD in the area. And Team 2 loses Gib's commander to those satellites. Team 1 wins the game. Ah, ha, 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 says Skillish and Noob. And with the Skatsis online, Team 1 survives and kills off the last remaining player. But could Shield Skathis... Uh, for real, he couldn't assist shields. Anyway, that was it. Team 2 loses the game. It looked like Team 2 was poised to win it for a long time, but Team 1 came back. System failure, control king and leaving definitely did not help with that, but, uh, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. And then that nuke that came into the west and killed off Schumer, that, that was probably the straw that broke the camel's back. The Scathus being online definitely helped focus a lot of the attention here from those Novaxes, but then... Skill issue new probably realized, well, there's only one comm left, and if I kill him, the game's over. So then he just found the comm and killed him off. But let me know down in the comments if you think there is, deserves MVP or MUP. I feel like... I feel like... I don't know. The the best play of the game was, in my opinion, the that just group of Percy's that just devastated the countryside here. And some of the base here for Team 1, Skill Issue Noob, and Hybrid. That just was devastating for the Eco. It got Team 2 realistically in a really good place to win the game, but they just couldn't materialize it in the end with two comms dying. Oh, and the, actually, three comms dying and then Gib being the last remaining one. But again, let me know down in the comments how you felt about the game. Please, if you haven't done so already, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And of course, thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. And I will see all of you in the next one.